folks that will not vote for a Mormon. No matter how you slice it, I'm not getting into Baptist or Mormon or Catholic bashing, okay? You, if you love God, you love life, you don't like corruption, I like you. You know, it's all the sectarianism that causes all the fighting. I'm not going to get into judgments here and turn this into, you know, beat my chest religiously and, you know, follow what I believe. I have a personal relationship with my creator. I can feel it. I know it. I've experienced it. And you know what? I don't really find that in these churches. I don't get a good vibe in them, so that's why I'm not in them. Pharisees came to Christ and they said, why don't you come to temple? Why don't you get up there on the hill with us and pray? And he said, oh, I do that in private in my closet. I, uh, you guys get up there and tell everybody how good you are all day up there. But the issue here is that Mitt Romney, depending on how you slice it, will probably lose to Obama. He's a former big globalist, hedge fund person, all of it. And it, it, in a way, it doesn't even matter because you get him in there. Now they'll get three or four more years before people figure out, hey, this guy's the same as Obama was. Remember all those poor Obama bots? Obama, Obama, Obama. Braying little Obama bot sheep, little Obama sheeple. Oh, thank you, President. I'm going to get a free car and a free house and all my problems are solved. You're going to take the money from the rich people. There's only $2 trillion in domestic wealth that's left here. I mean, there's globalists that control tens of trillions apiece on record. They're all offshore and exempt from taxes on record. But let's say you took the $2 trillion. Oh, what's that going to do for the $15 trillion deficit or the uh, GDP that's $15 trillion? Now the debt's greater than the entire GDP yearly. <clears throat> but you can't explain that to someone who is poor, who is into the entitlement society. Somebody who's poor trying to put themselves through night school while working two jobs, they understand it. And if we keep a free market, they're going to expand the middle class. We could all be middle class. We could all be wealthy. Our poorest people are wealthy compared to people 2,000, 3,000 years ago. There's unlimited potential, but through an incredible free market-driven, liberty-based market, there's so much wealth that it's a disruptive technology, is, is what the globalists call it, and it will unseat their monopolies. And technology will accelerate so fast, and humans will get life extension, and then our population will become so giant that they'll build cities up and down instead of out. We will colonize space, and it's over. And the globalists just don't like that. They romanticize a post-industrial, how they're going to have high-tech reservations they go to for new bodies and new tech, and the rest of us will be in loincloths, very small numbers, basically of like aborigines that they keep in certain green belt sectors to study primitive humans. And then they will split off into their new species. Now, again, when the New York Times and CBS News attack me for this and say, I believe this. No, I don't believe this. I give the quotes in my films and here on air. This is what they're setting up. This is a future without us. This is a future that doesn't need us. The elites have decided we've got robots, we've got drones, we don't want you anymore. And the ultimate exercise of power, the big gleaming switch that ensures that they get what they want, at least to one level, is to release the super bioweapons and kill the majority of the people. And they'll go into their armor redoubts and the military will all be happy to be there. You know, the, the select military and COG and then emerge after it and be given the cure and the antidote and then be integrated into the new future. And, and I'm telling you, they're planning this. So, so you talk about doomsday, folks, this is going to be bad. And, 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 and you could say, well, okay, we've seen the globalists talk about this and set it up. We, I mean, we see the architecture going in that way. You know, the whole global societal infrastructure, architecture, but will they really do it? I, I don't know. I mean, I know they're already playing with us like a cat plays with a mouse for 20 minutes before it eats it. We got blood coming out of our eye. We're scratched. Our back legs are broken. The cat's playing with us. It's dumping heavy metals into the food and water. All these other poisons, deadly vaccines, all the degenerative diseases exploding, cancer. And I'm like... 
I don't know. They've sure done a lot of other horrible stuff, though. I mean, here's CBS News where they're shooting kids up with live polio. Here's another one killing newborn babies with these shots. I mean, I don't know. They say they're going to do it. They've always done everything they say they're going to do. The cops are like, eh, we want to beat some old ladies up right now. Hi, this is Alex Jones. Oh, so it's time for the other candidates to step down like Michelle Bachman did. They're not going to win. It's between Ron Paul and Mitt Romney. The only person challenging Mitt Romney is Ron Paul. Now, the, the prostitute, prostitute media is doing something that's illogical, if you think logically, but may work on some sheeple. They're doing a couple things. They're saying everybody should stay in because it's still an open race. But Ron Paul can't win and should drop out because there's no way he'll ever be the nominee. No, he's in second place, undisputed across the country. Came in second place in New Hampshire, third place, and there was a lot of chicanery, probably one in Iowa. And that's even come out in the local papers that, oh, yeah, Carl Rove reported, you know, uh, the, the, the people didn't show up with the votes. We just decided Santorum, you know, went up six points or whatever. And so Ron Paul's out there saying, no, it's time for all of you to drop out. And all those other folks are anti-Romney. They're going to go to Paul, and he's going to have more points than, than Romney. If you break down the numbers. And in different polls, he beats Obama by more points than Mitt Romney does. And I don't trust Mitt Romney as far as I could throw him. I mean, he is a globalist who is for the socialist health care, for all the rest of the garbage. Now he'll tell you what you want to hear. But, I mean, haven't you been conned before? I mean, the idiots that said that, he, you know, that Obama was like Jesus. Remember that? And he was going to save us, and he was the one. And Pepsi got behind it. I mean, haven't you learned, people, that all this hype is just that hype? It's hot air. Here's uh, Ron Paul talking about nipping on Mitty's heels. Here it is. I called uh, Governor Romney a short while ago before he gave his talk uh, and congratulate him because he certainly had a clear-cut victory, but we're nibbling at his heels. <laughs> But there was another victory tonight. He had a victory, but we have had a victory for the cause of liberty tonight. Yes. That's right. There is, there is no doubt, there is no doubt that the, this whole effort that we are involved in will not go unnoticed. Let me tell you. <laughs> you only lose when you don't get in the game. You only lose when you give up. Don't you get it? Everybody's learning about the new world order and torture and wars and the Federal Reserve. This is, I mean, if the Bilderberg Group in 2006 was pulling their hair out about the liberty movement growing, the militia movement, the patriot movement, Ron Paul was just mentioned in there as one of the main constellation points. Now... It's just, it, it, it's surging, it's growing. If you look at the exponential growth curve, it's just stratospheric. And we've all got a responsibility, those of us that represent liberty and freedom and dignity and the republic. We really carry with us the remnant of what made America great. We carry with us really the, the republic's family jewels. We were the example to live by for freedom worldwide. America was admired. We were the good guys. We weren't perfect, but compared to everybody else, we were the good guys. We were the excellers. We had the highest test scores. We had the toughest men. We had the most inventors. We were the people that never gave up. We were the honorary folks that didn't put up with government tyranny and didn't get bossed around by bureaucracy. Everywhere else where humanity was bent over under the whip of bureaucrats and paramilitary police. We were the people that were willing to go to the end, were willing to die. That, that iconic image worldwide. And now look at us. We were taken over. We were fed poison, cultural and physical poison. We were beguiled. But now the giant is, is poisoned and, 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 and sick, but still incredibly powerful. And any time it wants to, it can break the trance. 
and stand. And, and, and the Giants now awake at the edge of the bed in an incredible hangover. The little globalist demons crawling all over it, trying to suck the blood out of it. But just the fact that it's woken up, the heart's beating, the strength is reviving it. And we are there breathing life into it. And worldwide, people see Ron Paul. They see the liberty movement. They see the common sense. They see the goodness. And there's Ron Paul-type movements all over the world to rediscover true freedom. This is a revolution of ideas, and ideas are bulletproof. No army can stop an idea whose time has come. The New World Order asks us to kneel and be their slaves. All Ron Paul is asking, and all I'm asking, is that you stand. Is that cruel? We'll be right back with your phone calls. All right, well, there's pure Americana Elvis. But nowadays, Americana is evil, so I guess Elvis is with Al-Qaeda. I guess all of us are, except for the folks that actually run Al-Qaeda up there at the Pentagon. Yeah, here are some of the quotes out of Barry Goldwater's book, and then I'll go to your calls. Uh, here's a um, page 284 of No Apologies. The Trilateral Commission, I already read this earlier, but I'll get to the new ones. The Trilateral Commission represents a skillful, coordinated effort to seize control and consolidate the four centers of power, political, monetary, intellectual, and ecclesiastical. All this is to be done in the interest of creating a more peaceful, more productive world community. Throughout my public life and in these pages, I have refrained from judging other men's motives. I have no hesitancy about judging their wisdom and the results of the actions taken. And he goes on to talk about how it's really evil. Page 285, what the trilateralists truly intend is the creation of a worldwide economic power superior to the political governments of the nation states involved. They believe the abundant materialism they propose to create will overwhelmingly existing differences and managers and creators of the system they will rule the future. Uh, here's another one, page 286. David Rockefeller and Zbigniew Brzezinski found Jimmy Carter in him their ideal candidate. They helped him win the nomination and the presidency. To accomplish this purpose, they mobilized the power and the money power of Wall Street bankers, the intellectual influence of the academic community, which is subservient to the wealth of the great tax-free foundations and the media controllers represented in the membership of the Council on Foreign Relations and CFR, or CFR and Trilateral Commission. Continuing, page 299, we have arrived at our present position of peril in a world and at home because our leaders have refused to tell us the truth unless we, who profess to believe in freedom, wake up. The world is headed for a period of slavery. He wrote this back in the 1970s, 1979. That's uh, excerpts of the No Apologies, the personal and political memoirs of United States Senator Barry M. Goldwater, 1979. And a lot of people think, well, if the TV says it, that's establishment. I'll go with that and I'll be establishment. No, you're following the edicts and the ideas of radical globalist who are anti-human and who see you as dog meat. And, they, and they've been very good at making it all look very...